We're at a very special place now. So this is the Arsenalna metro station in Kiev, Ukraine. And this is the deepest metro station. Hey, what's up? We'll talk to them in a minute. So this is the deepest metro station in all of the world. And it's 105.5 meters. So overall, the um, North Korean metro up in Pyongyang is deeper than this, but this particular station is the deepest. And we have some good entertainment. We have a guy in a accordion and some people that wanted to say hi. We'll see if they want to say. Tigavrich na angelskam? Tigavrich na angelskam? Da, da. Da, da. Manyazovud Bill. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you guys live in Kiev? Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. We live in so. Kiev, uh, in Cherskyi Rayon. Uh, where? Cherskyi Rayon. Cherskyi Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm here, I'm going to be looking at the world's deepest metro station and going to the Lavra. Okay. So, have you guys been to the tunnels? Yes. Okay, yeah, so I haven't. It's I'm going to check cool it out. It's a very place. Uh, I think you enjoy it. Yeah. I'll check it out, so, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go in and see what we can find here. So that was the world's deepest metro station and it's, um, I kind of lied that it's completely nearby but in about a 17 minute walk or so we can get to this um, old monastery, it's an Eastern Orthodox monastery and there are these caves that I think as far as I can read um, date back to the 11th century and they stretch really really far. I'm going to try to get to them. They um, apparently close in uh, maybe 45 minutes and I'm not sure if you can film there but it's, it's really kind of crazy. We have these catacombs going underneath ground right near this deepest metro station. And we have all these beautiful Orthodox churches, so I can at least show you some of those. So we're walking in that direction, and it's like a little bit under a mile. One of the things that's really cool to me in Kiev is that there's a lot of underground passages. There's underground malls, um, you want to go somewhere, you go underground through something. I, I need to cross the street here, and there's going to be a little mini underground mall as we go there. Well, it's not quite how I remember it from a couple years ago. I guess they're constructing a lot of things. I guess Novos Express, that's a like, little mini convenience store. And there used to be all kinds of um, like a bookstore and little shops and everything. So maybe not quite an underground mall, maybe something in a, in a bit. So we can see we're definitely getting close to this right now. Okay, so I was just in the caves and unfortunately they didn't let me video. I'm gonna post a couple photos that I found, not gonna be my own photos, um, but it was really pretty wild. So there weren't any skeletons that I saw, but there are actually a lot of mummies, you know, almost like you might think you'd you know, find in a pyramid. Um, and there are really apparently a lot of people that were buried in this place. Um, you have to be very careful in terms of getting in. I think like if you're uh, a guy and you're wearing shorts, they're not gonna let you in. If you're a woman, you have to have your hair covered up in a certain way. And they had even all these church services underneath the catacombs next to the mummies. And there wasn't necessarily that much of light sources down there. So they actually, you had to buy a candle for you know very, very little money. And you just basically light the candle and find your way around with that. So we're going to go in this place and it's a huge compound. I mean, this is just kind of the area outside. I walked back outside and I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to talk because it's not really entirely clear to me. 
Um, there's a lot of prayers going on. There's a lot of monks walking around. So one thing just to realize is that everything here is very much on a hill. I mean, this is almost going to be like a little city. Um, if you're having some knee problems or some other walking problems, you might want to reconsider going here because it's going to be a little bit tiring, you know, going down, it might hurt your knees. I'm, I'm fine, but I know some people could have, have uh, some problems with this and going back up is going to be a little bit tricky too. And this place almost feels like a little city with all these uh, things in it. And I think you can donate to a reconstruction of a cathedral there. I mean, look, you can definitely tell that you're not in Poland now. Definitely in the east. Just a little detail here. So I know I've been talking some, at least in the last video, about um, the language here. And usually things are in um, Ukrainian. But I'm a little surprised here because this is actually in Russian. And, you know, a lot of these churches were destroyed during the Soviet Union, so I'm actually really surprised that there's Russian uh, uh, being written here instead of Ukrainian. And the way you can tell is, look at that letter right there. It's like a 61. I call it a 61 letter. And uh, as best as I can pronounce it, it's eh. So this is uh, Laverskaya uh, Vipechka. And I'm not sure exactly what that means. It seems kind of like a restaurant, but um, I'm a little surprised to see that. And, I mean, we do have... Ukrainian over here instead and the way we can tell that is by that letter there That's only in the Ukrainian language. Of course, there are cats here Kitty cat. You hungry? Do we're done <laughs> You can back here to feed him Okay, so I had to come back here the next day. I'm not gonna talk that loudly because there's really a lot going on and it kind of feels strange like when you're in the library to talk too loudly because people seem to be pretty silent here. Um, so it kind of closed a little bit and I was um, kind of just ran out of time yesterday. And I have a little bit more information about um, what I was talking about before. The, there's something about like the Orthodox Church being split in some sort of way. There's something owned by the um, or that started before the Russian, em uh, around with the Russian Empire. And that's part of the reason why there's the Russian writing here, that it's not just entirely Ukrainian. And Dobryden. Dobryden. Good evening. Uh, Tigavarish na angelskam. Sorry? Tigavarish na angelskam. Tigavarishnan, please. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do, do, do you want to... English, but not so fluently as you. I understand. Where are you from? We are not native English speakers. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Odessa and Tamara from, from Kiev. Kiev. So I think someone starts talking to me every time I'm here trying to make some video like in a friendly way. But um, so apparently she wasn't actually allowed to be on video and give uh, this information. But there was a ton of stuff she taught me. Um, a lot of very specific things. This was made then, this, this time, this was made some other time. And it was just kind of too much for me to actually just really repeat in any reliable way. Um, now I'm going to actually go inside there. There's a service going on in this church and I was told that apparently it's okay to film this of course as long as I'm being quiet and respectful so I'm not I'm used to any sort of Orthodox service so this is gonna be something totally new to me you know I grew up kind of both around Catholicism and Lutheranism so that's gonna be a you know very different in terms of the traditions
So look at that over there. So I'm told that this tower, it's about 100 meters tall and it is possible to climb it. But I think the doors might be open. I still have enough time to climb this if I want to. It'll be a little bit tiring, but I wonder what that is over there. Okay, so as far as I'm reading, based on this plaque right here, this was from the 11th or 12th centuries, I think maybe from some of the um, original building. It says fragments of the, norm of the northern wall of the Dormetian Cathedral. And I'm not entirely sure which one of these is the Dormetian Cathedral. Uh, maybe one of these, because I know that a lot of these buildings, like I mentioned um, in yesterday's filming, um, aren't actually original. You know, they were destroyed and then they were recreated. Um, one other thing that I wanted to bring back to um, what I was discussing earlier before I got kind of interrupted is if anyone can kind of say more, because um, I don't understand this issue, about what exactly is going on with some of the um, church being owned, like say by Russian Eastern Orthodoxy, like in the Russian Empire before all this stuff. Because I was explained this and it was really something kind of complicated. I'm not sure that I really uh, fully understand it, so I don't want to say something that's you know incorrect here. So I did have kind of a funny conversation. So I showed earlier those people that started talking to me. And it turns out one of them is actually a math teacher. I think it's some sort of magnet school or specialized math school in Odessa, which is in um, Southern Ukraine, kind of the Miami of Ukraine. And so I was invited to give kind of some talk for some um, very smart high school math students. So maybe this will happen at some point. Um, this place is gonna be closing pretty soon. I'm gonna see if I can go to some of the lower area. This was the church we were in, I think. And this is another one. We just have all these services going on. And one thing I wanted to mention, just in terms of safety of going here, we're gonna go down to some lower areas soon. Um, I heard from some people that there were some fairly high um, rates of COVID among the monks here. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, and this might've been like in the beginning of the pandemic, but definitely anytime I'm going inside or in the caves or something like this, you know, this is definitely a situation to wear your mask. Um, another thing to be careful about too, is I think there really are some pretty sketchy people around here, like not in the video right now, but um, we're kind of a little threatening and come up and ask you for money and stuff like that. And I don't think that this is really so good a good an idea to really engage these people so i would say just kind of like it's it's a nice place but do be careful about two things be careful about covid and also just kind of be careful about some people that are maybe not the ones you want to engage in and so we're gonna go down this hill here So this is some sort of garden for the uh, the monks. I think some of them might live down there or something like that. We can see a nice view of the rest of the city. And these bells are ringing. I think that's maybe some indicator that I need to leave pretty soon. Um, I've been stuck in places before when they've closed, so I definitely don't want to get stuck in here. I don't know what would happen if I try to get out. This is the same place I was feeding that cat yesterday. So I think this place is clearing out and I need to leave pretty quickly. Just uh, see, I think this is pretty close to where I went in with the, to see the caves uh, yesterday. And I just want to get like a view of the city first though. This thing was kind of cool. Probably the manger, like a birth of Jesus scene. And let's just very quickly see the city. So sort of Babushka sitting that doesn't seem to be too worried about it closing. So I think there, I think like roughly there is where you enter the uh, caves and catacombs. And over here we can see 
city of Kiev. It's the river. Okay, so it is time for me to go. Well, I still can. Okay, so I think that wraps it up for today. Um, I wasn't expecting that to be such a dynamic place that basically it was so social in a sense. Um, so I felt like I was in a rush the entire time I was going through there. Um, but hopefully those little glimpses and pieces of information are helpful and useful to everyone. Um, some things I think I forgot to mention that this is considered one of the seven wonders of Ukraine. Um, also, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So I'm going to have definitely more videos coming from Kiev and a whole bunch more from Kharkiv from February that I haven't posted yet. So if you want to see more, it would really, really, really help if you like the video, comment, share, especially subscribe. And hope to see everyone in the next video.